Welcome, today we're going to go over how to generate a JWT token with using PostgreSQL and Postgres. To install the PG Crypto extension, you just have to copy and paste this create extension PG Crypto command, and that will create it. For the second extension, PG JWT type repository. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to download this locally so we have it in a folder structure. For the first approach, we'll be copying these two files to the PostgreSQL extensions folder. <clears throat> so we'll be copying the latest PG JWT SQL file and then the control file associated. For us, we used a Docker image, so I'm going to show you that code. So as you can see, in the location of our Docker file, we create a new folder, PG JWT. In this folder, we place the repository files we looked at previously. And then the destination path, as you can see, is the PostgreSQL 16 extension folder here. So we're just copying, again, the latest SQL file and then the control file to this extension folder. After those are placed in the extensions folder, you should be able to then run this create extension PG JWT command. The second approach that worked was copying this SQL file directly and then pasting it into your own database and running it uh, manually. The one change you'll have to make is to replace this ext schema, so this at ext schema at here, and you'll want to replace that with a associated schema. For us, we changed it to public here, so as you can see, we have the public dot instead of that ext extension. And so, once you replace all those, you can run this. So now that the two extensions are installed, we're going to set up the auth schema here, which will contain the users table, a few helper functions, and then the login function, which we're going to use to grab a username password and return a token. We have a video above that will kind of go in more detail where we manually generate it, a JDBT token. So first we'll create the schema, and then we'll create a table with the users. First helper function is to check if the role exists. So we're just checking the PG roles table since the roles that are associated are the ones within uh, Postgres. And this role will be added to the tokens payload. We're gonna run that check function whenever there's an insert or update to the auth users. Next function we have is an encrypt pass, which will encrypt the password. That function will be added on to the users table. So whenever there's an insert or update to that, this encryption will run. The next function is a user role, which just takes in an email password and then returns the associated role. For the main login function, what we're doing here is taking in an email password and then returning a token. Uh, the first thing we'll do is call that user role function above, which checks the username password with the crypt. And then given it returns a valid role, we'll go to the next step, which will be used to sign the token. And to know this sign function is from the pgjwt extension. And so what this sign function is doing is it's taking a payload here, which is the row to JSON of R, which means that it's taking the role here. So the role as role, the login.email as email, and then this time extraction as the expiration. So the resulting payload on the token would be role, email, and exp. And then on the other side, it signs that with a secret, which is currently for us saved in the database side. You can do that by running this command where you set that string to a specific secret that you want to use. So if you have an associated record in the users table here, you'll go down for the sign and then it'll and then I'll sign the token and return it. The last piece for setting up this schema is granting the proper permissions so that the Postgres APIs can access this properly. We have a web admin user, which is a non-authenticated user, uh, so someone making a call without a token. And then our three authenticated users, which is the basic, advanced, and admin. So second, we'll grant execute on the function auth login to the to the non-authenticated user. And then the next thing we'll do is grant select to the basic advanced users on the users table. And as you can see here, we specify specific columns. So this means like the these users cannot query down the password or any other information that we didn't specify here. For the admin user, we have a similar select, but we added on user ID. That way they can update records properly. As you may have noticed, we didn't grant select for the web admin user here. That won't be an issue because the the login function here has security definer on it, which allows the user table to be queried within this function without it needing specific permissions. 
To get the poster stalker container working correctly, we're going to set some environment variables. If you want to get in more detail here, we have a video above that goes over these in a little more detail with permissions and getting that working. A quick overview is the URI. It's the connection to the database that you have. The DB schemas is what's available through the Postgres uh, framework. This is a comma delimited list of schemas you want to include. This DB role is the unauthenticated user we mentioned previously. This JWT secret is what we went over earlier as well. You want to make sure that this is the same one as you have in the database. Okay, now you should be fully set up and able to create your own token. Let's uh, test it out. First, what we're going to do is query on the users table. So we should get a permissions denied because the web and end user doesn't have select permissions. And as you can see, we get this permission denied with the table users. To test out that our functions are working, let's run this uh, RPC login function here. The token was generated based upon the email password we passed in, so this Gordon Ramsay email address. And if we plug this into jwt.io, it should come back to the same results that are in the users table. So it should have a basic user as the role, and then the associated email address here as the email of the payload. Now let's call the same user's endpoint that we called earlier that failed for the permissions denied. Now when we run it, we're going to include a new header object, which is the authorization. And when you're doing your authorization, you have to include the bearer space in that string there. So you'll have a bearer space and then the token. The other note is we have a header for the accept profile. If you have multiple schemas within your Postgres uh, configuration and the endpoint that you're using is not the first one in that list, you're going to have to specify in the accept profile header which schema you want to use. So for us, we're using the auth. In doing that, you can see that the data is returned successfully.